I, Let's okay. do this. Okay. So, um, for my first question, what was your personal purpose to create quick learning and teach the world about memory learning and the brain? Okay. So, the reason why I started quick learning really was um, my inspiration was my desperation, meaning I, uh, I grew up with learning challenges in elementary school. So at the age of five, I had an accident, um, head injury, and I had some brain trauma. Mm -hmm. And I had learning challenges, uh, which means I didn't understand what teachers were teaching. They would have to repeat themselves over and over again. Um, I had very bad focus. I had uh, very bad memory. And it actually took me, Jeremy, an extra three years to learn how to read. And I taught myself how to read actually late at night by reading comic books. Um, when my parents thought I was sleeping. Um, so I struggled all through elementary school, through middle school, through high school. And I was also um, labeled, when I was nine years old, one of my teachers, I overheard one of my teachers, when they thought I wasn't looking and listening, point to me, talk to another adult, say, that's the boy with the broken brain. And that's what my identity was. Um, so even though I did the work, like I would do a book report, um, you know, in, in high school, but if a teacher asked me to give a presentation in front of the class, I was so nervous and so scared that I would actually take um, a failing grade, a zero, and say I didn't do it, and I would throw out the book report and all that work um, on the way out in the trash. Um, when I was 18, I went to um, college, and I thought I would be a, a you know freshman for me meant, meant I could have a fresh start, right? And I um, thought I would. I wanted to make my parents proud because, you know, they immigrated here um, and they worked really hard. I want to make them proud. And uh, I actually started doing worse um, because it's very difficult. And um, so I, um, I was going to quit school and a friend of mine said, hey, why don't you come home with me this weekend and um, get some perspective before you tell your parents you're going to quit. And I said, um, I, I decided to go. And the family is pretty pretty uh, successful and the father asked is walking me around his home outside his property before dinner and asked me a question saying how's school and I just break down and I start crying and crying I'm just like and I'm, I'm and I tell him like school's not for me I'm not smart enough I'm not good enough and uh, I'm ready to quit and he's like well why are you in school what do you want to be do have share and I he makes me write all these answers down on a piece of paper and when I'm done I start folding the sheets of paper and to put it in my pocket, but he grabs it on my hand and he starts looking at it. He starts reading my dreams and all my goals. And I didn't know somebody else was going to see it. And when he did, he's like, Jim, you're this close to everything on that list. And he spreads his index fingers about 12 inches. And I'm like, no way. Give me 10 lifetimes. I'm not going to crack that list. And then he goes like this and puts it aside of my head, meaning it's my brain. And he walks me into a room, Jeremy, of his um, home and it's walled on this room is wall to wall, ceiling to floor, covered in books, like a library in his house. And he starts grabbing books and handing them to me. And uh, and I look at the titles, and they're these biographies of incredible men and women in history and some very early personal development books. And he says, Jim, I want you to read one of these books a week. And I was like, oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. I have so much schoolwork. And he's like, Jim, he said, don't let school get in the way of your education. And I'm like, oh, OK. And then, um, then honestly, I was like, I still can't read all this because I have midterms. And he starts to read my bucket list, everything, my goals out loud. And a lot of the stuff on that list were things I wanted to do for my family that they couldn't afford to do for themselves. Um, and so with that leverage, I agreed to read one book a week. And then I got back to school. I have a pile of books I have to read for school. I have a pile of books I promised to read. I can't keep up. So I don't eat. I don't sleep. I don't work out. I don't spend time with friends. I just live in the library. And one night, I, at late night, I passed out. In the library, I fell down a flight of stairs. I hit my head um, again, and I woke up in the hospital two days later. And I, um, I had lost a lot of weight. I was down to 117 pounds, and um, thought I died. And I thought there could be a better way. And I thought, um, you know, maybe I should start studying, um, not what to learn. Like uh, I started looking at classes and good classes in school, you know, math, history, science, Spanish, but they're all on what to learn. But I couldn't find any classes on how to learn you know, how to think and how to focus, how to concentrate, how to read faster, how to study, how to uh, remember more. And I always thought it should have been the fourth R in school. You know, they teach you three R's, reading, writing, arithmetic. 
But what about recall? What about retention? What about remembering? And uh, Socrates says learning is remembering. And so um, I started studying these subjects, and then about 60 days into it, a light switch flips on inside my mind, and I started to do better and start to understand things, have better focus and read faster and remember more. My grades shot up, and my life got better. The reason why I teach this today, though, is because I started to tutor, and one one of the um, young ladies was a, she was a freshman. She read 30 books in 30 days, which is amazing. And I, I wanted to find out not how she did it. I know how she did it, but I wanted to find out why. I found out that her mother was dying of terminal cancer, was given 60 days to live, and the books she was reading were books to save her mother's life, which she ended up doing. And that's when I realized that knowledge is power, and that learning is our superpower, and it put me on this whole path. My whole thing right now is um, I want people to have better, brighter brains. And my message to everybody is it's possible um, because uh, you know your brain is, is amazing and you could get better grades in less time and, and, and with more confidence than ever. So you also released a podcast recently specifically for students. So can you explain what the main focus of that podcast was for our readers and listeners? Sure, sure. So we created the Quick Brain Podcast, which is a free podcast. Uh, podcast show and it's basically for busy people and it doesn't matter um, their age it doesn't matter if um, if they're uh, their students or their seniors it's anyone who's busy that wants to learn faster and achieve more and so there are episodes on for example how to read one book a week there's episodes on how to learn any subject or skill faster um, cut the learning curve. There's episodes on how to remember people's names because that's important to do you know, nowadays. Um, there's episodes on my top 10 favorite brain foods um, because there's certain, you are what you eat, there's certain foods that are really good for your focus, really good for your memory. Um, there's episodes on there how to set up your learning environment. Um, there's episodes on how to focus better. And so it's really for anyone who just has a desire to to learn with ease and effectiveness and positivity and, and, and be more productive. And so by working smart but, and not working just hard, and that's what the show is all about. So what is some advice for somebody who may be in school who is growing up with a learning disability or somebody who's just struggling to get good grades in school? Yeah. So I would say my advice to somebody who's maybe struggling in school um, or maybe they're not where they want to be. Maybe they're doing well, but they want to go to the next level. Is um, first of all, I would say you want to believe that you could do it. Because if you believe you can or believe you can't, either way you're right. And Henry Ford said that. And it's not a matter of, of how smart you are. It's more a matter of how are you smart. So I'll say it again. It's not a matter of how smart somebody is, but it's how are they smart. Because I find that everybody has a certain level of intelligence in some areas. And it might be verbal linguistic, but it might be mathematical. Or if it's not mathematical, maybe it's musical. If it's not musical, maybe it's their body, they're great at sports. Or maybe they're a great artist, you know, visual, spatial intelligence. Or maybe they're just great with people, interpersonal intelligence. And so I find that, like, for example, if I asked you to write your name on a piece of paper, anyone who's here with us, first and last name, and I ask you to switch hands and write below it first or last names, um, the second time you do it, it's going to take longer, it's going to feel uncomfortable, the quality is not going to be quite as good. And sometimes when you're learning something, if you ever feel like, even if you're interested in the subject, um, but you're not getting it, sometimes it's like metaphorically you're trying to learn it with the opposite hand. So it takes longer, it's more uncomfortable, the quality is not quite as good. Maybe the way the teacher teaches, the style of the, the, the way the teacher teaches is different than the way you prefer to learn. And you're like two ships in the night and you pass each other in the ocean you don't even realize the other one's there because there's no connection that's there I would say to the person that's struggling that um, because I, I struggled for 13 years you know in school that um, there's not only hope but there's a real help that if you're willing to dedicate yourself to learning how to learn um, that's I think one of the most important skills for people to have in today's age in school and in life the ability to learn rapidly and here's the thing like you don't have, like for example, you don't have focus. You do focus. There's a process. You don't have memory. You actually do a memory. You don't have creativity. You do creativity. So this is, for example, in the podcast, we teach people steps on how to remember names, how to give a speech without notes, how to learn another language. But it's step by step by step. And that way it takes, um, 
if you see somebody, I believe that genius leaves clues. That if somebody does something really well, you could get the same result because there's always a method behind the magic. That if somebody is getting straight A's or they have great focus um, or they're succeeding in any area, you could find out how they're doing it and you could do the same thing and expect different, you know, very similar results. And it's working hard is important. Um, and so grit is very important to have resilience and persistence. Um, but working hard won't always get you where you need to go. You always have to work smart also as well. Um, there's a great book called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It was a study done, um, best-selling book, uh, some of the most highly effective, successful people, and they broke it down into seven habits they practice on a regular basis. And the seventh habit, the final habit, was something called sharpen the saw. Sharpen the saw is talks about metaphor, like if you have all this wood you need to cut, and you have a saw, but it has a dull blade, like when's the best time to sharpen that saw? In the beginning or at the end? Um, so obviously it's the beginning, right? Because you want to sharpen your skills. And what I'm here to say is a lot of people, when they're studying, they have a lot of work. They have a lot of reports to write. They have a lot of research to do, a lot of books, textbooks to go through. And that's like all the wood you need to cut. And I would say take the time in the beginning to sharpen your saw, sharpen your study skills, sharpen your reading ability, sharpen your memory, and then everything after that gets easier. And there's when it comes to your memory, everyone can study, right? You, you don't... Some people don't study, they cram, right, the night before. They don't stay for like five weeks, then for all night they study. And the next morning, you don't want anyone to talk to you at breakfast because you don't want any information to fall out of your mind. And you can't wait to take the test. But once you take the test, all the, but then it's gone, right, because there's this forgetting curve. And uh, the forgetting curve basically says that once you learn something, within 48 hours, 80% of it could be gone. And so what can you do to be able to, to keep that from, from happening? is by improving your memory because there's no such thing as a good or bad memory. There's just a trained memory and an untrained memory. And everybody, your, your memory, your intelligence, your learning is not fixed like your shoe size. When I am on stage and I speak at universities, um, Caltech, Harvard, anywhere, um, I do these demonstrations while I memorize like 100 people's names. Mm -hmm. uh, 100 people stand up and I'll memorize their names. Or they'll give me 100 words or 100 numbers and I'll memorize it forwards and backwards. I always tell people I don't do this to impress you. I do this to express to you what's really possible because everybody can do this, you know, regardless of their background or their age um, because we all have the same kind of brain and we just need to learn how to learn. So you, so you say that you believe that everybody is able to do that, but what do you think is the one thing that limits people from having such an extensive memory and having like the dedication to learn it all? Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll say um, two things. Two, I think two things keeps people from achieving that level of success. Um, I'll say, first of all, I would say belief that it's possible. And I know I mentioned that before, but mm -hmm. I believe all behavior is belief driven that in order to be able to achieve some kind of result, you need to do something about it, but you can't do it unless you have a behavior, uh, belief that allows you to do it. So for example, um, so my name, my last name really is Quick. The podcast is called Quick Brain, and you know, I, I didn't change my, my last name to do it. It's my, my, my dad's name, my grandfather's name, but I had to be a runner back in school, right? A lot of pressure on the way your name is Quick. And, um, but when I was preparing for a marathon, my, one of my first marathons I ran, I, there was a chapter in it uh, the psychology of running the marathon, the mental aspect, right? Besides the physical aspect. And it said this um, verbatim, because, you know, I'm a memory expert. It said, your brain is like a supercomputer, and your self-talk is a program that will run. So if you tell yourself you're not good at remembering names, you will not remember the name of the next person you meet because you program your supercomputer not to. And so I always tell people right up front um, is to watch your self-talk and your beliefs about something because your self-talk is a program will run. And here's the thing that people always write down, they always tweet this. I always tell people, your mind is always eavesdropping on your self-talk. Your mind is always eavesdropping on yourself. So it's always, always listening. So you have to be careful with what you're, what you're feeding it. Um, so that's, that's really important. This, the second thing I would say, besides belief in yourself that you can do this, um, that your past doesn't equal your future, is you need the proper training. Right, you can't, you don't, nobody, so for example, I teach people, we have a, a quick student um, program 
you know, online, right? And we have 150 students from 150 countries around the world, and we routinely train them to read three times faster than they currently are. Essentially, read something 15 or 20 minutes and normally it takes an hour. And um, I always I always ask people about their reading. So many people have trouble reading, right? You read, read a page in a book, you get to the end, you just forget what you just read. And you have to reread it, you don't know why. Um, and I always tell people, if you want to read faster and understand what you're reading, there's obstacles that are getting in the way. First one is lack of education, mm -hmm. uh, and meaning that you're not born with the ability to read, right? You're not, you know, you weren't born crawled out to the, you know, hospital waiting room to start speed, you know, reading magazines, right? It's a skill that you're taught. But when's the last time you, you took a class called reading? Like, how old were you when you took a class called reading? Not the last one. Mm -hmm. Like, eight years old? Seven years old? So the difficulty and the demand has increased a lot since you're seven or eight, but most people still read like they're seven or eight years old. So it's a skill, and like all skills, they can be improved with proper training. And so I'm, I'm saying that to the person that says they don't have a good memory, I would say watch your negative self-talk. Because if you say like, oh, I'm forgetful, or oh, I'm just not smart enough, or oh, I, you know, I always forget this. Um, when, if you fight for your limitations, you get to keep them. If you fight for your limitations, you get to keep them. So don't fight for your limitations. Um, the other thing I would say is find ways, whether it's through our podcast and programs or somewhere else, to learn how to learn. There is no more important subject to, to master in your life than learning how to learn because we live in a digital age where we are you know, electric cars and spaceships that are going to Mars, but how most people learn is like a horse and carriage you know, because it's so slow. And what I'm saying is that you can learn to learn faster. Um, and it makes your life easier. Like learn how to study properly, and you can apply that towards any subject um, that you want to. And um, and so I would say there's no such thing as a good or bad memory, just a trained memory and untrained memory. So learn how to train your brain. Just like people go to the gym and they train their bodies to be faster, to be fitter, to be stronger. You could train your, your mental muscles to be faster, smarter, and fitter. And, um, and you have an incredible advantage. The average student leaving um, school will have you know, about 10 different careers in their lifetime. Um, they're saying you know, anywhere from eight to 14 different careers, not jobs, different careers, because the world is changing so fast. And so your ability to outlearn, to outthink, to outact others gives you such an advantage, especially when you're going into, into college, you know, in that competitive area. You, know, you need to be able to learn faster, read faster, focus better, remember more. And uh, we can all learn how to do that. So what was the situation where one of your skills for a quick recall came in handy? Yeah. So this happens on a regular basis. Like in, in, as, a, as a student, you know, once I learned this, I wish I had this back in high school. It would have been the best advantage for standardized tests, for writing papers, for, um, for doing well on exams and everything. Um, so I wish I had it. So I had it. I, I learned these skills and developed them when I was in college. So I was able to memorize everything. I, so, for example, um, after I learned these skills, I could read a book a week, like 50 books a year, that, which gives me a huge advantage while I was in school, mm -hmm. you know, going through my studies. Um, when I was there, I was able to memorize all the facts and the figures and the formulas and have them at the, my mental fingertips, as opposed to just repeating it in rote, rote memory. Um, like, for example, in, the, in our podcast, I teach people how to memorize like, the periodic table. You know, I teach people how to memorize, like, you know, that, that's hard, hard technical information most people can't grasp. I teach them how to do it in, in minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's, I think, the fastest way of changing the belief is by getting people to do something they never thought they could do before. And so, you know, with, with students, I routinely show them how to memorize the capitals of countries, the capital of all the states, um, to improve their vocabulary, learn 10 new vocabulary words a day in five or 10 minutes, uh, literally. Um, and it sounds kind of crazy, but it's like you can learn 10 a day in 30 days. That's 300 new words a month that you're learning in just your, you know, a few minutes. And all this is possible. And so I would encourage people to, to maybe listen to the episodes that they feel like are most relevant to them and then just put it to the test. Because ultimately, the expert is you. You know, you test it on yourself to see if it really works for you. And um, so, so I would say that when I learned it, I was able to, to immediately do better on my, my, spend less time studying and get better grades. You know, I was able to keep up easily because before I struggled to keep up with all the reading uh, for my classes and I was able to get ahead for the first time. 
um, and I was able to do. I was able to finally give talks in front of groups of people because I could do it confidently because in one of the episodes I teach you how to give a speech or a book report um, or presentation in front of class without any notes. And that's such a powerful skill to have in school and also in, you know, in, your, in your work also. What do you think are some handy tips for sleep habits because students have to sleep yeah. Like yeah. Okay, so there's 10 things. Here's, here's the thing when it comes to students. Mm -hmm. um, if a student's thinking that they want to improve their memory, they want to learn faster, um, about one-third of your memory is predetermined by genetics and biology, but that means two-thirds is in your control, right? Two-thirds, which is powerful. That means it's based on what I've identified as 10 things. And I, I go through this in one of the podcast episodes and I show them how to, people how to remember it, but I'll go through the 10 things really fast and I'll answer your question about sleep. There are 10 keys to being faster and smarter when it comes to your brain, to having what I call your, your quick brain. Number one is a good diet, okay? Because there are certain foods that will make you distracted. There are certain foods that will make your brain lethargic and tired. You know, like that brain fog sometimes you feel in school? Certain foods that are doing that. But there are on the opposite side, there are certain foods that give, get, give you your brain energy and focus and will improve your memory. So I would say good brain diet. And it has everything from avocado to blueberries, I call them brain berries to coconut oil, to salmon, to eggs, like there's certain things that are good for you. And I, I do the 10 I did an episode on my favorite, my favorite 10. Another, another thing that you need to do is kill ANTS. ANTS stands for automatic negative thoughts. You want to get rid of the negative thinking. The third thing is exercise. So you primarily have a brain because your brain controls your movement. And as your body moves, your brain moves. So one of the things you could do is get up. Um, I set an alarm on my on my cell phone all the time and I just put 45 minutes and every 45 minutes I'll, I'll work for 30 minutes 45 minutes but then after that I get up and move around because sitting all day like it's not healthy for anybody mm -hmm. um, they said they, I heard recently someone said sitting is a new smoking so you need to move literally as you move your body you get you get smarter it, it helps with neurogenesis neuroplasticity mm -hmm. the fourth thing is brain nutrients you know maybe you don't get enough you know, you need, multi, you need a multivitamin or something like that. Number five is a positive peer group because who you spend time with is who you become. So make sure you're being around people and study groups, people that are encouraging you and supporting you. Uh, six is clean environment uh, because when you clean your desk, you clean like your room, you clean your desktop on your computer, you, you have clarity of thought here. Seven is sleep, which I'm going to go into because sleep is critical. Eight is brain protection. Um, I, you know, I've had a lot of falls and accidents and stuff, wear a helmet. You know, especially if you're playing sports and stuff. Nine is new learnings, because you always want to learn new things, because that's how you get smarter. And 10 is stress management, because I find now students more than ever are incredibly stressed. And what happens when you're stressed is you create cortisol and adrenaline. And it's good for fight or flight if you need to do something physical, but it's not good if you need to think. It's not good if you need to study. It's not good if you need to prepare and remember stuff from an, for an exam. It shuts down parts of your brain. Stress does, so manage your stress. Now, going to sleep, the reason why sleep is so important is this. When you're going through your day, you're learning and you're learning and you're learning. When you go to sleep, you don't stop learning. Your, your mind is still processing, integrating in, and it's consolidating short to long-term memory. So sleep is critical. For people, first of all, so I would say make sleep a priority. You need sleep um, because it's gonna, because when you don't sleep, um, you don't get enough. Uh, for example, your IQ goes down. About, they say about 15 points. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't, you don't, you lose your focus easier. You can't make good decisions. You have uh, brain fog or brain fatigue. So make sleep a priority. So a couple of sleep hacks. All right. The last hour, first of all, you, you want to get to bed relatively early. Most people are staying up past midnight, and that's that's too late. All right. So you need to go to bed at a certain you know usual time and make it consistent. You know Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. um, have to not go on your digital devices the last hour. I know this sounds so bad and so impossible, but here's the reason why. If you're on your laptop or you're looking at an iPad or you're looking at your phone, um, it emits this blue light on it. And the blue light, the problem with it is it, it, it inhibits your production of melatonin. And melatonin is your sleep hormone. It helps you to relax and go to sleep. So if you're having trouble sleeping, most of the reasons why is because you're on your smart devices all the time and you're getting these dopamine fixes every time you get a like, a comment, a share, or whatever, right? Um, and then every time you get that, you get stimulated. And also, the blue light also keeps you awake also because you don't produce melatonin. So if you are going to go on your phone and do that, then there's these apps like Flux, like on your computer. Like, and it 
literally as it gets later in the, at night, as, as the sun goes down, it starts extracting the blue light, um, filtering the blue light out on your screens. Um, you know, for, for your phones, you could do the grayscale on it also as well, or nighttime, and so you don't have as much blue light. Um, in, in my bedroom, it's very important because you want to eliminate all light in your bedroom. You know, so if people are having trouble sleeping, even if there's a crack on, um, in the, you know, on the window, you know, in your shade, that keep you up on uh, your alarm clock also as well. So you want to eliminate all light. Um, you could go um, online and buy these uh, blackout curtains. And blackout curtains can come in every color, but inside the fabric is a black, it's a black layer um, that let, doesn't let the sun light in. Um, so that's really good to be able to do that also as well. But I would say stay off the digital devices. Get your blackout curtains. Don't don't have sugar past a certain time. I don't sugar in general is not good for your brain because it makes people just very distracted. But you want to eliminate any kind of stimulants at night, whether it's sugar or caffeine and stuff like that, which are really really important. You want to keep the temperature in the room uh, relatively cold, um, which is which is good to do. Some people, in order to be able to get better sleep, they'll take a salt bath because, like with Epsom salt, um, because the Epsom salt actually uh, has magnesium, and the magnesium is very calming at night, and that is a good recommendation also as well. But sleep, make sleep a priority. Get rid of the digital devices as much as possible. Keep, make sure the room is pitch black and a little bit on the cold side. And if you want to be able to take a, like a warm bath, I don't know if the people do that, but, um, but it'll help you with the magnesium because it'll help calm you and relax you. And, and go into what they call parasympathetic mode. But um, sleep is the one of the best study hacks there is. For people who pull all nighters, it never works really well for them. You know, you don't learn best like that. Thank you so much for this interview. It was really nice talking to you. Thank you. Bye. I appreciate it. And then if anyone has any questions, they could just ask me on Twitter or Facebook, Instagram at Jim Quick, and I'll be sure to, to reply there. And uh, enjoy the podcast, and thank you for your time.